Louis, I was expecting you. Do you feel better? Yes, yes, don't worry, I'll be alright. I wanted to speak with you about what's going to happen next. But before we begin, I would like you to give me back the Holy Lance, please. Now that Gregory is gone, he won't be needing it anymore, and I prefer to put it back in its place. I no longer have it. So, at the insistence of Monsieur Bonaparte, I put it back in its place. Come, Louis. You, you can't do that to me. Don't be childish, please. Come on. So, at the insistence of Monsieur Bonaparte, I put it back in its place. Come, Louis. You, you can't do that to me. Don't be childish, please. Come on. Of course. Here you are, Father. Thank you. You wouldn't have been able to do much with it anyway, given it isn't the right one. You mean I got the wrong one? Now, don't blame yourself. There was a reason why I put it with all those copies. If you had been forced to use it, it would never have prevented one of us from changing bodies. This conference will have been one of the most eventful I've ever known. I'll just have to take your word for it. Before I get to why we're here, you must know that I've been watching you very closely over these past few days. I won't hide the fact that I was disappointed that you did not succeed in saving Jacques Perrou. You handled that situation very badly. As far as the door of my crypt is concerned, it is a pity that you lost your hand while trying to open it. You succeeded in telling the Hillsborough twins apart. Even for me, that wasn't an easy thing to do at first. I remain proud of what you achieved for me by falsifying that letter to the Pope on behalf of Piaggi. Because I know that was not an easy task. Anyway, now it's time to put an end to things, once and for all, Louis. The poison that runs through your veins has definitively deprived you of the hopes I had placed in you, through your own faults. There must be an antidote, right? I'm afraid it's too late, at least for the continuation of my project. I'll be honest with you, Louis, though it pains me. Your body is corrupted. The poison has been spreading inside you for too long. It has already caused irreparable damage. You are of no use to me now. I beg your pardon? You see, when the time comes for me to change bodies, I usually pass into the body of one of my children. The transition is much smoother and allows me to be operational much more quickly. Seeing the good work you had done since your arrival, I was convinced I had found my next body. Could only be you. But then you had to go and ruin everything. But father, why are you telling me this? Not after all I've done, I, I beseech you. Don't make this any harder than it already is, please. Harder? Listen, just be grateful that I'm granting you your freedom. Now I'll ask you to leave me and be gone within the hour. Moreover, if I were you, I wouldn't waste a single second in sterile conversation, because I'm not so sure that poison will even let you see the French coast again. I must make him get closer to me. Come now, don't complicate things. Wait, I have something else you want. Well, look at that. You found it. Hmm. Decidedly, you are very resourceful, Louis. You impress me right up to the very last. For Alazif, I am willing to get closer. Ancient. <laughs> I, I was 
right, my son. You really are the very best. As Mortimer had planned, Napoleon Bonaparte sold Louisiana to the United States after purchasing it from Spain. Bonaparte continued his political and military ascension until he proclaimed himself emperor. He went on to invade a large part of Central Europe. The legend of Napoleon persisted after his death, conferring on the emperor the role of Messiah for France. Remaining very popular, George Washington put an end to the various internal rebellions without violence and re-established trade agreements with Great Britain. Upon his death, he became a national hero and left an entire nation in a state of... On his return to Spain, Manuel Godoy proceeded to give Louisiana up to France. Later on, he became the target of the Crown Prince of Spain, Ferdinand VII. The latter gave no respect to his mother's lover going as far as condemning him to exile. He confiscated all of Manuel's titles and possessions, as well as those of his mistress, Pepita. Pursued, they ended up living out their last years in France in poverty and anonymity. The influence von Volner had over King Frederick William ironically ended up working against him. The sovereign thrust him into increasing repression until the end of his reign. Von Volner became the object of the people's hatred, was therefore stripped of his titles and land by the new king, and died in poverty to general indifference in the Prussian countryside. The Duchess, through her close ties with the crown, made it possible for Great Britain to build closer links with the United States on both the diplomatic and commercial fronts. She became inseparable from Marchioness Cunningham, reputed for being the most influential mistress of King George IV of England and whom she inducted into the Golden Order. His Eminence, having successfully accomplished his mission, returned to His Holiness the Pope with full honors. Although all his ambitions had become possible, to the stupefaction of his entourage, the Cardinal preferred to retire to his Tuscan monastery, far from all political and diplomatic entanglements. Fascinated by the techniques involved in exorcism and demonology, he dedicated the last years of his life to the study of Inquisition reports. No more was ever heard of Lord William Mortimer. His sudden disappearance was the subject of conversations in the European courts, but only for a few months.